food in ancient Rome. The cuisine of ancient Rome is probably not everybody's cup of tea. It was consumed at the mensa, the dining table of the ancient Romans. A usual meal for the upper class could have looked like this. Pulse, one of the main dishes of ancient Rome. This was essentially a form of porridge. Along with that they might have eaten bread, refined with olives and figs for example. Bread was often eaten with moretum, a spread made of sheep cheese, a lot of garlic and herbs. Most Roman meals would have been spiced with garum, a fermented fish sauce. We'll show you how to make these dishes step by step later on in the video, and the recipes are in the description as well. Back to the topic. To go along with such a meal, the Romans drank water or wine. Beer, called carvisia, in contrast would have been considered barbaric. The wine was usually diluted with water and sometimes spiced with herbs and vinegar. Water and vinegar was called posca. Another variant was mulsum, wine spiced with honey. It is fascinating that the Romans even had recipes about how to make white wine out of red wine, even if the method seems pretty weird. It would have worked like this. Take the whites of several eggs, put them in the red wine bottle, shake it firmly and let it rest for a night. The result looks like this. So that didn't work out as planned. This is probably due to the fact that the egg whites are not alkaline enough to change the wine's color. Ancient wine was much stronger, which might have made a difference as well. This recipe is from an ancient cookbook, often referred to as De Re Coquinaria, about cooking. Much of our information about ancient Roman recipes goes back to this book, which was pseudographically attributed to Marcus Gavius Apicius, a famous Roman gourmet. This is Marcus, by the way. He was regarded as a notorious wastrel by many ancient authors, such as Pliny the Elder. But his bad reputation might not just have been due to his wasteful tendency, but also because he recommends rather dubious tricks such as this one, quote, to make bad honey into good honey, just add one third of the bad and two thirds of the good and then sell it, end quote. He might not have made himself very popular with that, However, his book is a remarkable read, because besides many tasty recipes, he also describes methods of food preservation, such as this little neat trick. Quote, to make pork last longer, put it in mustard, which was prepared with salt, vinegar and honey. Make sure they're covered completely, eat them whenever you want, you will be surprised. End quote. A few days later, it looks like this. There's also some evidence about snow cellars which could cool food and drinks during the hot Roman summers. There's even a report about such a technique from all the way back of the late Bronze Age, which we know from tablets written in Old Akkadian. The ruler Simrilin of Mari, who lived near the Euphrates around 1750 BC, ordered to build an ice house to cool his wine and beer during summer. On the tablet, which is exhibited in the Louvre in Paris, he commands, quote, make them collect ice, let them wash it free of twigs and dung and dirt. End quote. And many similar things. Such a preservation technique might seem like a waste of resources, but because dining had an important social function in the ancient world, it was not preposterous at all. Many scholars consider the ancient Romans a face to face society, which is very much about seeing and being seen. Dining, therefore, was very important for politics, upward social mobility, and status. In addition, restaurants only catered to the lower classes. Fine dining was thus reserved to the Domus, the house of the Romans. If Marcus would have wanted to impress a fellow Roman, for example to lure him into a political or economic collaboration, he would not have done it during breakfast, called Iacentulo, nor during lunch, Prandium, but during dinner called Cena. In the early days of Rome, Cena was often eaten around 2 pm, but because most upper class Romans did all their work in the morning and went to the bath, Right after that, it gradually shifted to the evening. Marcus would have to prove his ability to offer special foods to the Roman he wanted to impress. To achieve this, he had to deviate from the so-called Mediterranean trias, a term coined by the French historian Fernand Brodel. It consisted of grains, olives and grapes. Those three elements made up a significant part of the diet of all social classes and were common on pretty much every Roman table. Pulls and bread were made from different grains, mainly wheat, emmer and barley. Emmer was the main crop of the ancient world. Because of its stickiness, it was perfect for making pulp, but also suitable for bread. Emmer bread has a nutty flavor to it and is still eaten today in places such as the Netherlands or Switzerland. 
In antiquity, it was gradually replaced with wheat during the time of the Roman emperors. Anyways, pulse was considered the aboriginal food of the Romans and was involved in some religious rites and remained important throughout Roman history. The basic grain pottage could be elaborated with all kinds of chopped vegetables, bits of meats, herbs or cheese to produce dishes which modern aficionado have in fact compared to risotto. We use pecorino cheese, by the way. Note that the Romans did not have potatoes, tomatoes or maize yet. These would only be known in Europe after Columbus would discover the Americas. Also, citrus fruits were eaten rarely by the Romans. They used them mostly for medicinal purposes. Another way for Marcus to impress his fellow Roman with his cuisine was the use of other ingredients of the Mediterranean trias, olives and grapes, not in its original form, raw or dried, but in their processed state, oil and juice respectively. Olive oil was an especially important ingredient and often used to refine meals of the lower classes as well. All this would still have been considered usual though and was also eaten by the major part of the population. Depending on the wealth, people were able to enrich their meals with some other foods and condiments. To spice things up in a literal way, fish was the most important ingredient. Besides meat and even snails and grubs, fish was the most important source of protein. But more importantly, the most important condiment, because fish was the main component of a sauce called garum or liquamen, a spicing sauce which was very popular. It is used in almost every recipe in De Re Coquinaria. To produce it, it needs to ferment for several weeks. We've made it ourselves as well, but we had to do a speed recipe, since we couldn't ferment very smelly fish in our apartment for several weeks. It is still incredibly smelly though. Basically, we reduced a lot of fish and herbs with a whole lot of salt, and in the end we added a lot of honey and let it rest for a while. The Romans would even have used fish remains, blood and intestines. Our result looks like this. It produces a lot of waste though. However, during ancient times, this would have been reused. Taste-wise, imagine something similar to Worcestershire sauce, but with less sugar, since sugar was very rare in antiquity. Their main sweetener was honey. Among classicists, it is sometimes called the ketchup of the ancient world. If Marcus had served all of this to his guests, he would have impressed them for sure. If you would like to cook a Roman dish yourselves, you'll find a few links in the description.